Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the letter where the phone has Won't been incessantly stop ringing. ringing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just going to go see what Zach has to say, so that nose will stop. But before he even speaks, my question has already slipped out, including every pent up worry and tension in my body. Where are you? The line's choppy, though. I can still make out the words he's saying. Nothing to worry about then. He's just someplace where network coverage is shitty. Can't imagine where at this time of the morning, though. No, he's totally at the mansion. Mm -hmm. Did he go out for a jog? Oh, Ash? Could you repeat that? Signal shitty here. I asked, where are you? Hell, Zach, I've been calling your number for a good 20 minutes now. What kind of shithole did you get into? I've meant that to sound as friendly as possible to keep things light, at least. Instead, only the frustration shows in my this tone. Sounds like a you petulant too. dad. I should be asking you that question. I've been looking all over the mansion for you. I thought you'd be... What mansion? Do I really need to answer that? Why are you even... Please don't tell me that's his plan. A morning visit to the mansion where Luke Wright is. Of all the pig-headed things to do right now, it's the best thing he can come up with. Breaking and entering. I've got plenty of reasons to rail at him right now, although no matter how much I want to give him a piece of my mind, unfortunately, it's not the no. time. No, wait. Just get your ass to Isabella's place and hurry. He pauses a moment, a second of indecision while he seems to contemplate his options. How urgent is this? In truth, the question, the hesitance, and the indecision in his voice has caught me completely off guard and understanding dawns on me. His decision to go there isn't born out of a stupid impulse. He must have found something. However, no matter how urgent it is, he still shouldn't have gone there alone at that. Despite myself, in that split second of comprehension, I allow it to show a weakness. A simple request brimming with every unease and disquiet causing turmoil within me since last night. It bears a selfish hope that I'll understand, even though the unstable signal that's whatever's keeping him there, he'll be willing to set it aside for now. Pressing enough for you to stop asking questions and get yourself here. I remember Please, this conversation. Zach. Yeah, yeah, so this is the day that Zach mm -hmm. went to the mansion. Yep. Sounds feels the other end of the line again. For a long moment, I assume he won't heed it, and I'll have to drive there myself just to drag him away from whatever danger he's skirting. Thankfully, he agrees. I'll be there in a few. Uh, an hour or two tops. Thanks. I'll see you. Relief washes over me as soon as the call ends. Normally, I don't let myself a moment of respite in times like this. Gotta stay alert. Rebecca's still out there, has yet to return any of my messages. But for the moment, I relish in it. This is probably the first time I've permitted myself to do so since last night. Even the muscles in my shoulders have been complaining from all the tension I've taken on. It still annoys me that I can do all I can do right now is grit my teeth and trudge back to Isabella's apartment. Useless. That's what I am in the face of this. A mad dash around Luxbourne and Anselm isn't going to help things. It's not like I'll simply stumble across them on the side of the road during a drive. The city's too big a place for one person to go searching for only two people. I'll be lucky if I even glimpse the hair of either of them. With one last hopeful glance towards the open skies, I slip back into Isabella's apartment and close the door behind me. I might have already grown used to this, but waiting will always, always be the hardest part. More so when it's the people you care about. You're up early. I thought you left. Interesting. There's a butterfly. It's not the first time I've seen Isabella like this. Standing casually by her kitchenette, a ladle in hand, keeping an eye on whatever's stew, uh, stewing on the stove, while humming a soft tune under her breath. Five years ago, it has become... A common sight after the three of them, including Zach and Rebecca, found a mutual interest in cooking. After that, whenever our schedule allows it, one of them will invite everyone to dinner or lunch instead of eating out. Rebecca prefers it that way, healthier, she claims. Zach's just too happy to be able to cook for everyone. Isabella, on the other hand. As long as there's food, she's happy. <laughs> Me? I've been banned from the kitchen ever since the pressure cooker <laughs> incident. <laughs> Easier times. Good times. Right now, however, the scene brings an odd sense of normalcy, a strange fit with all of the things going on around us. Not unwelcome, only bizarre, I suppose. Isabella doesn't follow up on her question earlier, but she does raise an eyebrow my way when I take too long to answer. For that, I can only offer a casual shrug in response and a short answer. I've checked with Zach and Rebecca. I'm just waiting to hear back from them. I'll add an equip or two for her, if the timing for a joke isn't off or doing so won't be inappropriate. I don't want to alarm her either. There's no reason to, yet. Until Zach gets here or until I've ans received an answer from Rebecca, whichever comes first. Nevertheless, it's clear she has plenty of questions. It's right there in the subtle crease between her eyebrows when the inquisitive gleam in her eyes. Curious as she is though, she decides against voicing all of her questions out. Instead, she shifts her attention back to the stove and gestures vaguely with her hand in the couch's direction. Well, if we're going to wait for them, don't stand around there. It's getting distracting. You're just cooking. How am I distracting? I don't know. Something might explode again, maybe. 
Zach's kitchen ban for you is also in effect here, you know. <laughs> now, shoo, go. <gasps> Stop hovering. You'll ruin the food. I'll be done here soon. She leaves no room for an argument by swatting the ladle at me, and just like that, I've been kicked out of the kitchen. Left with nothing else to do, I drift back to her tiny living space and slump down on the couch. Closing my eyes, I allow the noise from the television to guide my thoughts. The ones I've been keeping at bay, freeing them from the cage I've built around them so I won't have to think. One by one, they trickle back into my consciousness, each more frightening and unnerving than the other. So many things going on, so many things happening. The papers we've gotten at BRC doesn't provide any comfort either. Seriously, is there even a point to those after last night? What will asking those people do? If anything, this only proves there might be more copies of that dumb piece of paper. We have one here, but how many exactly is there out there? More importantly, how do we get out of this stupid mess? Ashton. Damn it, I haven't felt this kind of bone weary exhaustion in years. I don't want to think what might happen next in case I miss something. Shit. Rebecca, Zach, Isabella. Now depending on me and Ash. The voice snaps me out of my thoughts, abruptly wiping away everything, running a racket inside my head. Suddenly, Isabella's there, crouched in front of me when I crack an eye open. I hadn't even noticed the exact moment when I bent over and buried my head in my hands. Figures why she's staring at me like I fainted or something. The crease in her eyebrows grows deeper at my lack of response. Although she's merely staring at me without saying a word, her expression says everything. So much for trying not to alarm her with bad news. Sorry, I just spaced out for a moment. Don't mind me. For a brief moment, she seems to accept that. Quietly, she shifts, stands up, and takes the empty space right beside me. All done without a single comment. Then the next thing I know, she's gently pushing a bowl in my hands. The scent reaches me first before I've gotten a chance to take in what she has just handed me. A faint sweet smell of cocoa wafts from the dish. Ooh. Calming, comforting, despite the multitude of things bothering me, it certainly smells like the kind of food you'll eat on a rainy day. Though from the get-go, it doesn't look as appetizing. Is it like chocolate oatmeal? Yeah. What is this even? <laughs> Porridge? Why would you put chocolate in it? And milk drizzled on top? Oh no. She tells me my tastes are weird, yet here she is, handing me something equally as strange. In fact, she has already started digging in hers. I'm just not sure if the taste will be equally as appealing. Baffled, I glance her way. She offers no immediate answer, simply continues eating as if she hasn't done so in a week, with her focus solely on the television. She's not watching, however, just listening. As a background noise, the voices from it seems too cheerful. A welcome distraction, if anything. It's only after she has finished off half the bowl does she acknowledge the question in my eyes. With a sigh, she cradles the dish on her lap and looks down at it. Briefly, her lips part, then close. A hesitation, though I don't push her. There is a distant air on her, as if she has remembered something that warrants a poignant thought. When she speaks at last, it's in a tone too careful, like she's still weighing her words, considering the proper phrasing for it. Yet, sincerity underlies each syllable once they're out in the open. You should eat. Back at home, Mom would never let us leave the house if we hadn't eaten breakfast yet. Even Papa has got an earful when he tried. So eat. You'll need it. Is it? Yeah. She returns to her food afterwards, while I can only stare at the one she has proffered not a few moments ago. Warm against my hands, tempting me to take a bite. Not that I don't appreciate this, but what good will this do? Zach and Rebecca both out there. Who knows when the ghost will show up again? Even in our dreams, we're not safe. But that's it, isn't it? We don't know when, and at present, we have no choice, no chance at respite. Maybe the only one we'll have. Even if it's as mundane as sharing food between us, quietly, just seating side by side like this, without exchanging any words. The intent hangs unspoken in the air, something that probably goes as far back as the second she offered food. Still, in the end, Isabella never pushes it. Rather, she lets her own silence convey her hope. Uh, whether I allow myself to break the silence, she leaves up to me. Bigger offer? I guess. Yeah, we'll go with the, we'll go with mystery food. If we I mean if we get poisoned, at least the ghost didn't kill us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Although I, I feel like that has not really moved, no. despite all the good choices we've made. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe like because some of them are a little obvious. Yeah. The words are off my tongue, awkward and unfamiliar, far removed from those jests and quips we've shared. Yet she accepts this with a smile and nothing more. Regardless of everything left unsaid, the sight of it brings comfort. More so than any generous offer of food can give. Though we both lapse into silence after we've, as we finish our food, there's ease in it. And this, and the muffled sounds of Luxborn filtering into the room. 
In the light streaming from her window and the faint draft occasionally drifting in, catching the loose tendrils of her hair. In the way her voice falters when she tries to form words. And despite the horror looming over us, I find myself wishing for minutes to slow, for seconds to last. But ultimately, she's the one who breaks it, softly after a minute's pause, and <laughs> words mumbled under her breath. Sometimes silence simply compels us to speak. I've been wondering, you know, before last night, before Mama told me the news, what if, what if Papa passes away, despite everything? That sort of thing. I know it's not good to think about, but I also knew it was getting worse. Mama won't say anything, but I've always known that one day, he'll eventually. She releases a sigh as her grip on the bowl still holds tightens. On the bowl, she still holds tightens. Okay. <laughs> there are no tears, but she might as well have them with how weak her voice falls. Are there even any left? I don't know what I'm going to do. Before, I can easily say it's because of Papa. Now, I don't have anything. You have that scholarship from Lux U. Were you going through my personal papers while I was sleeping last night? This morning, yeah. And it was on the table, open. I don't really have to. You left it sitting in the open, right there on the table. Like there's still anything to hide, she snatches it away from where I've placed it back earlier. Except there's no anger or annoyance in her face when she looks at it and rereads every line with a pensive expression. After a short while, she folds it neatly along the creases and sets it I back. I don't even know if this will work out. Well, if it doesn't, what about that exhibit you've been planning with Zack? Do I even have to ask where you got that? Zack sucks at lying. You have no idea how easy he is to read. It was all in his face when I asked about it. And anyway, if that doesn't pan out too. I trail off, hesitating, measuring the weight of my next words. Genuine as they are, a part of me believes they're a burden too heavy to impose upon her. Because no matter how much I want to, her to stay, we are not what ties her here. It'll be selfish to ask that of her. More than anything, her family will always come first. I say it, nevertheless, if only to let her know that no matter what her choice will be, there will be people here whose lives her mere presence has changed. Mine, most of all. You. You have us. The words startle her to a pause, and slowly she turns to me, her eyes wide, disbelief all over her face. <gasps> you but guys actually care about me? <laughs> right? Really? But before regret forces an apology up my throat, her expression dissolves into something I can't quite place. Something distinctly softer, more tender, familiar, almost in the same manner she glanced at me years ago, that day at the bridge. However, I don't get a chance to figure out what it all means for Sit her. Sit here. Yep, there we go. Thank God. Uh, wait, what relationship status? I don't see, I didn't see anything. Or is that from the choice we made earlier, I guess? Maybe. All of a sudden, a knock breaks the moment, and just as fast, both our attention shifts towards the source. Before things can get awkward fast, I stand up to open the door while muttering some flimsy excuse in the process. I'll get that. It's probably Zach or Rebecca. Really, I know we're in a pinch, but the timing can't get any oh, worse. Morty. Unrelated frustration aside, once I fling the door open, a whole chunk of that s the stone that has been stuck at the pit of my stomach simultaneously unseats itself. Still be there? Oh. <laughs> there in the hallway stands Zach, his hand raised, ready for another knock. Although he's not at his most presentable at the moment, ruffled and drenched with sweat as he is, relief quickly washes over me like a tide. He's still panting when he brushes me aside and heads in. The second his feet crosses the threshold, he scans the place, eyeing what little he can see of the room from the doorway. When f when finds none when finds none of whatever he's looking for, he turns to me with a questioning look, one that has a hint of panic in it. You said it was urgent. Did anything happen? Is it Becca? Bella? Everyone's fine. Well, Becca's not here. She went somewhere this morning and hasn't answered any of my calls yet. But Isabella's... I'm here, Zach. Morning. His weight shifts at the same time. The stiff line in his shoulder eases. Once Isabella walks up to us and welcomes him with a smile. He relaxes then, returns her greeting in kind as soon as he has let out the breath he has been holding and the tension finally is off his body. So, nothing's wrong? Why'd you call me here for then? My explanation can wait. He has a lot of explaining to do. The fact that he went to Anselm alone for some godforsaken reason warrants a proper one. Ghost or not, he's already been given a warning. It frustrates, frustrates me to no end this might be the plan he mentioned the last time we spoke. I get that he's worried about Hana right. Somehow they've become friends, but that's not the issue here. Not when there's a murderous ghost who might go after one of us at any given time. Sure, Zack made it here in one piece, but... 
by some dumb luck, he's all right. And this takes one off the list of people I need to worry about. Frankly, as annoyed as I am, I can't just stay angry at him when I look at the situation that way. Hell, if that call didn't connect in the exact minute, there might have been a chance he won't be standing here. This is a blessing in itself. Now, the first things first, some things still need to be discussed. Uh, I feel like there I feel like there's like not really any reason to be hostile. No, the bottom one, you're okay. How do we do? Yeah. Except when I open my mouth, the only thing that spills from it is my own relief. Despite myself, despite the rational part of my brain screaming everything wrong about Zack's neat little plan. We've had so many close calls within just a single night. Zack showing up in Isabella's doorstep alive, whole and unharmed. I, I might as well take comfort in that while I still can. You're... You're okay. You did tell me not to do anything stupid. Suddenly the whole room feels too heavy and all I'm able to do is drop down on the couch. A headache also threatens to burst in the same moment. Or perhaps this is what release from anxiety feels like. Regardless, I reach up a hand to pinch the bridge of my nose, even if it'll likely do nothing to alleviate the impending pain. Christ, you were right there! We have this stupid, stupid, stupid curse thing going on, and you were right there! Stupid, 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 stupid! Stupid. Stupid. You just walked up inside a private property! Those people can easily sue you for breaking and entering, and that's the least of it. I know, Ash. But I can't just leave things as they are. I've got to do something. I know you're not very fond of the rights, but they don't deserve it if something bad happens. Hana, most of all. God damn it, Zack, I was worried. <laughs> Unexpectedly, he laughs. Not the half-hearted sort he makes when he's awkward or coming up with an excuse. A genuine one. Before my annoyance grows again and I snap at him, though, he suddenly catches me in a headlock, his arms looping around my neck while he grinds his knuckles against my skull. Helpless, I squirm under his grip in protest. Even then, it's hard to do so when you're up against a six-footer. Zack! No, oh, he's worried. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> that cool act ain't gonna fool me anymore. Let go! He relents soon enough, though only after he's done ample damage in my hair. I hate it when he does that. But for a few moments there, the tense mood finally lightens up and everything felt like how it used to be before this whole mess began. Makes appreciating the little moments like this easier, still. Seriously, Zack. Why are you even there? Told you already. I was looking for you. Why would I even go there? Well, you mentioned a plan with Isabella here. I assume that's where you guys went, since that's where she found the letter. Sorry. I was really at a dead end. The logic in it stuns me into silence, to say the least. Then I remember his hesitance, the tone he has taken before agreeing to go here, and all at once my anger from what he's done wanes. Partly this is my fault for keeping things vague. I can't berate him for assuming that when I've only left him with vague answers. You could have called me. I did. I didn't receive any and my phone was with me. You're kidding, right? I was at it the whole night. The atmosphere in the room changes in two heartbeats. Back again, the tension riddled one plaguing us. Zack stares at me like I've grown another head, then gradually he shifts his attention to Isabella. The expression is in his eyes questioning, asking for a confirmation, like my words can't be trusted. Not that I'm holding it against him. I can't even believe the things coming out of my mouth these past few hours. Meanwhile, Isabella stays quiet and has been like that for quite some time. She looks like she wants to disappear right now. Guilt, frustration, anger, fear, all of flashes fleeting, fleetingly across her face before it melts away under the expression of worry. Please tell me he's joking. You were there. No, we really didn't get any. Everything was quiet last night. But Zack? At BRC? Ashton and I saw... She never gets to finish that. Sup, Bob Ash from BRC? <laughs> yes. Watch out, can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty Abruptly. Fly for Asian guy. <laughs> Up, Probably my phone city. rings again, Back blaring its badly out. sang Can't ringtone throughout the whole room. <laughs> I don't cool get why he still has it then. <laughs> Both of them pause, up, waiting the when I go city. pick it up, Back when I pull it up to check the color ID. Without another word, I slip out of the room and answer the call. However... 
However, the tone she assumes isn't what I'm hoping to hear. And we'll just have to hear about more about that in the next episode. Ghosty! Oh, yeah, because this is when we escaped from the, the ghost uh, mm -hmm. in the library. Oh, man. All right. We're, we're, we're picking back up again. Hopefully. Slowly but surely. If we don't have a 45-minute monologue <laughs> in my head about this phone call. Well, there's that. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.